Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in the last one I showcased a box of 25 untested graphics cards that I paid £50 for on eBay. In today's video we're going to attempt to fix or at least extend the life of one of the dying ones. This is the GTX 460 and when I tested it before it caused green lines and artifacts to show up on screen. So disclaimer time, the following method isn't really a fix, it's more of a temporary solution to a long term problem. All we're doing here is prolonging the eventual death of the GTX 460. I'll leave a link to a Q&A video from Lewis Rossman in the description who explains what is actually happening when you do what I'm about to do and why it works. I'm not promoting this video as a proper or long term fix. First things first though, and we need to take our card apart. Most desktop graphics cards come apart the same way and it all starts with removing screws from the back. I was going to fix multiple cards in this one video, but as this is the first one I chose to be sacrificed, I mean revived, and each of the cards problems could be unique, I thought we'd start off simple. With the 460 we've got a couple of screws that need removing from the back of the card too, and a couple by the display output connectors. Once these have all been removed we can lift off the cooling fan and heatsink, and continue to dismantle the card. Remember to disconnect the fan from the header as well. The RX, sorry, GTX 460 has just one central fan. My chosen method of choice for cleaning the plastic fan shroud is a microfiber cloth, which will pick up all the loose dust. Our 460 isn't actually that dirty, so it didn't really take long for it to clean up. The heatsink itself can be cleaned the same way, though using a firm paintbrush will work a lot better and will allow you to get in between the heatsink itself, which will be far more effective. It's up to you how you remove the dust or if you remove it at all, but one thing is for sure, and that is that we need to remove the old thermal paste with isopropyl alcohol, as it's non-conductive and doesn't leave residue. The old paste should come off very easily. You might not even need the isopropyl alcohol if the paste hasn't completely dried up. Now I'd still recommend it as it makes the job far easier and it ensures that there is no paste left for when we reseat everything a little later on. Now comes the part when you think I've lost my mind. This is a 2000 watt heat gun and we're going to use it to prolong the life of our card. As I said before this is not a fix and I'd only suggest trying this as a last resort and not on a graphics card that's still under warranty. This is more of a well I've got nothing else to lose so I might as well try it situation. All I'm doing here is blasting the chip itself. Some people prefer to bake their broken graphics cards in an oven, but I'd rather not have the aftertaste of burning PC components clinging to my food for months. This heat gun cost me £12 from a local hardware store, and after this video I used it to strip paint off an old door. Fun fact for you there. <laughs> Fixing a notoriously hot Fermi card with more heat doesn't sound like a very good idea, and at this point I wasn't really expecting much. There was no science behind this either, I did it for about 5 minutes and left the card outside to cool down for a further half hour. After recovering the chip with some thermal paste, rather haphazardly I should add, it was time to reassemble the GTX 460. Now this is of course as simple as putting everything back where we found it, including the screws, I was tempted to run the card passively without the fan to see what would happen, but you can probably guess what the outcome of that would have been. So at this point I tried expecting nothing in an attempt to avoid disappointment. The truth is though, is that I really wanted this to work, even if the card lasted a day without green artifacts all over the screen, I'd have been happy. Thankfully then, it did. Gone are the green lines in Windows. Installing the NVIDIA drivers was the next hurdle to jump over, as I have seen a lot of what I thought were fixed cards crash at this point. Surprisingly though, this went smoothly as well. Any weird on screen effects are the result of the camera here, and not the card at this point. So why does this work? Well as I said before, I'll leave a link to a video where it's explained far better, but from what I understand, all we're doing here is moving the underfill beneath the chip around, not melting and resetting solder balls like the myth suggests. As I said, it's a temporary solution. You're sort of reanimating a graphics card, not reviving it. For all the time it works, it's essentially a zombie. 
What we should do now though is test the GTX 460 and see if it can actually play some games without immediately dying. I've chosen a small selection of titles and run them all at 720p with various settings. I used MSI Afterburner to record and I apologise in advance for recording in 30 frames per second. In fact this whole video is in 30 frames per second because I assume that the GTX 460 would do far worse than it did. It seems that the 460 is actually still quite a decent 720p gamer, at least with older titles, though it did handle the ever-demanding Kingdom Come Deliverance fairly well, as you'll soon see. I sort of underestimated the card, so in some cases I used lower settings than I would have liked to, but at least this meant near constant frame rates. Actually I say that, but Fallout 4 gave us some pretty interesting frame times. The uh, average figure was okay, considering this is a 1GB card, but as you can see the frame times were all over the place. I opted for medium settings as the game looks much better than it does on low, and the TAA setting means that we aren't looking at a mess of jagged edges. With Fortnite, I went for the performance setting. This is a new setting that turns graphics down further than the low preset, but it means that you will see a huge boost in performance from older hardware. It seems that this may have been an overkill option here, as we could have definitely stuck with the standard low settings and still received a playable experience. At least from what I can tell from this footage, I mean we're getting over 100 frames per second easily when we crank everything down to the performance preset. In Grand Theft Auto 5, we could have likely opted for 1080p. I included a temperature monitor here, as I have done throughout, so that you can see how hot our old Fermi GPU is getting. Nothing out of the ordinary, to be honest. I am surprised at the performance of this thing though. I imagine the 768 megabyte version would do a little bit worse. And I also think there's a 2 gig version of the 460, which might do a little bit better, especially considering 1 gigabytes of RAM isn't really enough for most games these days. One gigabytes of VRAM, sorry. Well, VRAM or RAM, you're gonna not have a very good time with either, I don't think, with modern titles. On to the aforementioned Kingdom Come Deliverance now, and this notoriously demanding AAA game ran fine at 720p with the low settings. It still looks fairly decent as well, if I'm honest. I'm actually both happy and surprised by this test. It's not unexpected, but a lot of newer games won't start, be it due to lack of sufficient VRAM or driver support. But there we go, the first of our 25 graphics cards revived, or resuscitated anyway. The GTX 460 might continue to work for 5 minutes, 5 days, or 5 months, but one thing is certain, and that is that it will likely fail again. And for that reason, I can't really sell this card on because I wouldn't want it dying in someone else's hands. If you've literally got nothing else to lose, then why not give it a go? But with all that said and done then, thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you've had any luck reviving a graphics card in a similar way in the comments below. And if you did, how long did it last? Was it five minutes? Was it five months? Was it five years? Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.